Since I've moved to Madison, I've been to a few theater productions, and this is really something new to me. Hell, I never even acted in theater before, and... <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons has moments of the theatrics, and I've never really developed the skill of doing it on the fly. It's a lot of improvising, it's a lot of expressions, and how you talk, how you say things, and... I really don't have much of that uh, when I do my gaming. I just do off the cuff and all that. Very monotone, very normal, very nothing very awe-inspiring. This is pretty much as I'm talking to you now. <laughs> but yeah, I've gotten to theater a bit, and um, what does this have to do with Dungeons and Dragons? Well, uh, I saw a show recently called Requiem for a Dungeon Master, and it's a blend of my passion, Dungeons and Dragons, and theater, and it is so it's glorious. That's really all I got to say about it. <laughs> Requiem for a Dungeon Master is playing over at Broom Street Theater uh, right now. And uh, I think it's like the third show I've seen slash been part of. And it's probably the most um, spectacular of them I've seen thus far. The stage is set up like a triangle and it's got painted murals all around it. And I am telling you, I was so dang giddy when I walked in and saw the monsters that I recognized off the bat. It was just... A very geek out moment, if you will. And that's really just the entire play, is what I gotta say. I mean, almost every single sentence has something to do with the history of Dungeons and Dragons, or gaming uh, talk in general. Uh, oh, I recognize that thing, I recognize that comment, that, that term, oh, that bit of history, oh! I mean, sure, I didn't really get everything they were seeing off the bat, because we're talking about pre Dungeons and Dragons, everything that Gary Gygax did uh, before then. But as soon as everything was coming along, I was like, oh yeah, this is how it all came about. Whoa! So it was a very passionate uh, geek uh, play for me. Um, uh, I'm geeking out right now. The play benefits from something I like to call triangle power. Um, the triangles are everywhere in nature when you really think about it. They're in fr friendships, triads, the Triforce from Link. Okay, it's Zelda actually, but whatever. The play benefits from triangle power. And uh, it makes for a very intimate stage experience because players of the players, <laughs> I like to call the actors players, all the actors are entering and exiting uh, from these three different points of the stage, making s almost seamless transitions uh, for, of place and time. Even the lights uh, go on and off to, uh, to make transitions happen. It, it's, it's mm, so much information is coming at you at once, but it's, it's just, it feels natural. It feels fast-paced, and, oh, it's great for this geek, I tell you. <laughs> and the actors, the four actors, do it so dang well. They're all playing multiple parts, and again, entering, exiting, transitioning into different characters and different times and places, into different people, and... <laughs> I really liked the play. It was a very good time. As of this moment, there are five performances left, starting tonight. Uh, should go check it out if you can, if you're in the Madison area. I know there's not going to be a lot of people that can see it. Not in Madison, not in Wisconsin even, not in the States. <laughs> but hopefully, um, the play will get performance elsewhere. I'd like it to. It's deserving of it. If only because I'm a geek, a fanatic that believes people should know about the game of Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. Four actors, three-sided stage, two hours of your time, one awesome play. All that really needs to be said. Granted, I could geek out some more, but I need to calm down. <laughs>